Star Wars. It's what I have been living in a tent on the sidewalk 11 days for. Morning, Twin Cities. <laughs> Happy Star Wars Day. Happy Star Wars Day, indeed. This is the date in the Millennium Falcon <laughs> that Han and Chewie go forward right. to in the second Star Wars movie. I'm Jack Tomzak. That's Andrew Lee. Good morning. Mashing her fat paws into the buttons this morning is Lump. Ah! It's Friday. Parody song contest. Sorowski yes. from the City Pages. Dave Osmek is coming in. Congressman Tom Emmer and the representative Joe McDonald, the big Star Wars fan, calling in in about a half an hour. Now let's get to it. Andrew, you saw the new Star Wars movie yesterday. I went last night. Uh, the 7 o'clock showing, the first showing. Well, I mean, like, the, the first, first public, public showing, I know. Jack I got went, to see it at a screening early. I went days ago. Yeah, yeah, you're special. Well, uh, not only do I get a uh, my meals supersized at McDonald's for free. Ooh, you don't pay the extra 39 cents? Just a wink. <laughs> a super wink. A wink and a, and a thumbs up. I also get to see the, uh, the movies before other people. It was amazing. Okay. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I, I just absolutely loved it. It felt like a kid again the whole time. From the opening uh, blast of horns, watching the crawl roll across the screen, I was immediately engrossed. Uh, and just the movie just made me happy. Good. Like from start to finish. That's it what was something has to. For most movies. Something has to, yeah. exactly. Not much in my life does anymore. Well, I Especially moving. you. Ouch. I like you, Lump. <laughs> the power did not go out. Dang it. Mm. Much to Lump's chagrin. <laughs> no, it just it made me feel like a kid again. You know, it, it brought back all the, all the memories and all the emotions that are associated with the original trilogy. And, uh, and I thought they hit all the right notes. It what didn't have a bunch of hokey, and no spoilers. We're not going to do any spoilers. No, nope, we so, don't do so that. Don't worry about that. But it didn't have a bunch of hokey CGI effects like the prequels well. did. Um, and I just, I just loved it from start to finish. I thought it was, it was perfect. Former fill-in host, now corporate shill Mike Wilson mm -hmm. had, had been after me for a few days to give him my thoughts on the movie that I had seen before everybody else. And I said, no, Mike, I will not ruin this for you. And then he saw it yesterday as well. Mm -hmm. And he texted me, and he, he thinks how you think. He mm -hmm. felt like a kid again. Because we were talking, he asked uh, days ago if it was what it could have been. I'm like, look, man, you're ever going to make a movie that, that meets the expectations of people who grew up with the first three Star Wars that we first saw when we were children? Yeah. You will never, you're never going to get that. Right, right. You can never have another first time. Uh, yeah, and and he he said that that this that this came pretty close. Yeah, and this came as close as I think you could, honestly. I think that's because it was a remake of Episode Four. <laughs> I've seen this movie before. It's called A New Hope. It hit a lot of the same notes, and I think that if you're looking for something to criticize about this movie, and a lot of people are, apparently you're one of them. Oh, I found him. Um, the the, the, uh, the criticisms found me. That is the that is where I think a lot of people are going to hit. You're, that's the criticism you're going to hear more than any other is that it's it hit a lot of the same notes. It followed a very similar arc. They had to bring uh, no, Carrie no Fisher back. They uh, had to bring Harrison <laughs> Ford back. There's the uh, there's the Tin Man was in this one again. Uh, Dog well, Man was in expect? it again. It's set in the same universe, like, 25, 30 years after Scary Return of the Jedi. Scary with that really deep voice and a mask. <laughs> Jeez. No, I... I, I this is, a, this is what, you're, what you're hearing is a man who doesn't allow himself to experience joy. Oh, man, I tried. I, the, I again, we're not going to give any spoilers. Um, first half of the movie, I was like, this is perfect. This is what this should be. And then I kind of... And maybe... I'll, I'll give you this. Like when I, I saw the uh, the Man of Steel movie, which I didn't like the first time, I saw it late at night when I had no sleep. Mm -hmm. And I saw the Star Wars thing at 11 o'clock after the show one day, no sleep. Maybe maybe it's me. Uh, I'm, I didn't like Dumb and Dumber the first time. I have problems. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you do. So maybe I'll take another look at it. But, uh, yeah, and, and in, in the breaks, I'll we will 
do some spoilers. <laughs> yeah, because I've got some real issues. Yeah, I walked out of the movie, and that was one of the things that I thought was that uh, if you, if you are looking for something to to criticize, that's really probably the only thing you can do is that it. But but that's not to be unexpected. That wasn't unexpected for me at all. Uh, they're making a new trilogy. They're going to, there are story arcs and themes that were consistent throughout the first three movies mm -hmm. that they're going to continue to be consistent with in this new trilogy. Mm -hmm. And that's not to be unexpected. Yeah. Uh, you know, very similar themes, uh, very similar arcs, very similar notes throughout the movie. But the feel, the emotion, the tone, it was funny. I mean, it had like le yes. legitimate, yes. Yes, several like legitimate laugh out loud moments. When the which the first trilogy really didn't have. I thought they you smelled mean, bad on the outside. Um, <laughs> when the when the A Wall stormtrooper meets the heroine mm -hmm. and says that he's with the resistance. Yeah, yeah this is what we look like. <laughs> some, some look differently. It's like. This, that was funny. Right. I don't know who that actor is. I've never seen him before. He's he, great. He, he was good. He was fantastic. Yeah. Overall, a good movie worth seeing. Yes. But it is going to disappoint. I think it'll disappoint the nerds. It'll disappoint really? the people. Who, I don't think so. Well, I guess Wilson, last night I talked to him. I don't think so. Both of us are having Walter Hudson in the next two weeks. I know he's a fan, so we'll uh, get his thoughts on it Yeah. as well. Early also, reviews have all been pretty consistently positive mm -hmm. uh and and i agree i mean i like i said the, the the big thing that that i kept coming back to and i thought this several times during the movie is this movie is really making me happy yeah and and what more do you want you know what more do you want out of a movie uh, i i enjoyed the entire experience it, it made me laugh i was smiling and just completely engrossed the whole time and without you know without giving away any spoilers what the the biggest thing to me that the prequels were lacking that the original trilogy had and which this movie demonstrated right away Heart. was personality within the characters. The characters actually had distinct and different personalities. There was some character development. And if you watch the, the prequels, every character is the same. Mm -hmm. They're earnest and serious. Mm -hmm. And they all talk the same. And they all, t they all have the same cadence in their voice. And it's just completely lacking in personality and character development they're all the same this one right away you 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 meet one of the central characters in the, in the opening scenes of the movie and right away you can tell all right this guy is a character and he's mm -hmm. got a fully fleshed out personality i'll leave it at this and we are going to go to break christian if you're still on the line we'll take you after the break uh with the opening crawl big they they set the stage well. They set their goals, I think, in the right spot. And I'm not, maybe I'll ruin the first three seconds for you. It's Luke Skywalker's missing. That's it. Mm -hmm. In The Phantom Menace, it's like, I it's can't subsection see three of right. the uh, Trade Commission's uh, uh, charter. Uh, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. This is like, Luke Skywalker's missing. They're looking for a map. Right. Go. Go. That was good. Yeah. All right, Christian, hang on line. We'll get your call. When we return, we will talk with Representative Joe McDonald, who's apparently a big Star Wars fan. At 645, Congressman Tom Emmer calling in. Also, Senator Dave Osbeck joining us. And Corey Zorowski with City Pages at 8.